The Christmas season comes with a lot of traditions. When Santa rides in at the conclusion of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, you know the Christmas season has officially begun. Tis the season of shopping, ugly sweaters, and overeating. While Black Friday shopping hours seem to change every year, one thing that hasn't changed is my perseverance through those crowds at 4 a.m. to get that electronic item that I just have to have. Why? Because it's on sale. And then there are those ugly Christmas sweater parties for me. It's not Christmas until I can bust out my Christmas ugliest and wear it over to my neighbors for their annual party. While it's never a sweater I'd actually sport in public, the memories of this tradition are priceless and I look forward to it every year. Some of you grew up in families steeped with Christmas tradition. First it was your grandfather, and then it was your dad who read the Christmas story every year on Christmas Eve. And while you may have rolled your eyes when you were younger, it's now a rich tradition that you've passed on to your own children with the hopes that just maybe they'll continue it with children of their own one day. And of course the cookies. We can't forget the cookies. Why do we make plates of cookies? To give to our friends and family, only to be met with a similar plate of cookies in return? You know, we could just all make our own cookies. But that's the fun of Christmas. It's a time of giving, even when we're giving the exact same thing that someone else is giving us. We love baking, eating a lot, and giving gifts. It's tradition, and it's all part of our own Christmas story. For a lot of us, Christmas really does feel like the most wonderful time of year. And while we enjoy the gifts, the food, and the parties, more than that, Christmas means time to spend with friends and family. Christmas is a time when we just get to be together. But what if that's not your story? As wonderful as Christmas is, it can also be a time of year that reminds us everything that isn't great. Maybe Christmas reminds us that we would have written another type of story for ourselves instead of the one that's currently playing out. For some of us, we watch those commercials on TV, you know the ones. They're designed to pull at your heartstrings. The ones where everyone is seated around the dining room table eating a perfectly cooked turkey and telling each other how much they enjoy one another's company. And instead of feeling sentimental, we think, I wish that was my story. Because, well, it's not. Our family doesn't look like that. It never has. And if we're being honest, we wonder if it ever will. There are a lot of other types of stories that Christmas can remind us of. A story where you feel lonely, wondering if there will actually be a party that you'll get invited to. And if you do get invited, you have to decide whether or not you want to show up without a date again. Or it's a story where you wish your marriage was still intact. Or a story where you're reminded of your financial struggles and wondering how you're going to get the kids presents this year. Or a story where you're well aware of prayers that haven't been answered. Or a story where you wonder if God still cares about you. I know I've thought that before. Even in the midst of all the fun that Christmas brings, it can also be a time when you wonder, where is God? What is he up to? And why hasn't he come through for me like I've asked him to? Some of you may be like me and you've wondered if you were the only ones who didn't have a picture perfect story around Christmas time. After all, no one's social media highlights the tree without presents or the nights spent alone. It's easy to think you must be the only one who isn't living the Hallmark commercial. But if you've ever felt like that, then you're in good company, and what we're going to talk about today is for you. Once the events in the Old Testament ended, there was a period of about 400 years before the events of the New Testament began. And in those 400 years, God's people walked a rough road. They were back in the land God had promised them, but they weren't independent. They were the property of foreign nations. And it was during those 400 years that empires rose and fell, and God's people were ruled by different foreign power after different foreign power. They were tossed around like they were any other insignificant territory, not God's chosen people, living in his promised land. And after years and years of being seemingly forgotten, God's people must have wondered what had happened to all of his promises they had heard about for so long. His promises of a Messiah, a Savior, an everlasting kingdom? As they fell captive to each new foreign power, they might have even thought, surely this is not the story that God has been intending to write. Or was it? Towards the end of that 400 years lived a man named Simeon. Now, Simeon was a Jew who loved and obeyed God. He knew and believed what God had promised to his people. And Simeon believed that when God said the promised Messiah was coming, he was coming. 
Now remember, for Simeon to still believe that God was working and that God was still writing a story, that was no small task. A lot of people were probably wondering if the promised Messiah would ever come at all. It had been years since God had shared a lot of his promises and things weren't turning out as anyone had expected. Until this point, had it been left up to the Jewish people, this is probably not the story they would have written. There seemed to be no trace of Messiah, and yet Simeon still knew that despite what he could and couldn't see, God hadn't abandoned them. Simeon was one of the few who still believed why. Listen to what we learn about Simeon. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. God had told Simeon that he wouldn't die until he saw the promised Messiah with his own eyes. We're not told that God gave Simeon any other details, but what we do know is that by faith, Simeon went to the temple and he waited. And while he was there, Mary and Joseph came with the baby Jesus. God had kept his word. He made good on his promise and Simeon was there to see it. Here's what makes this even more interesting. We don't know if Simeon knew any of the details of what would happen as Jesus grew up. He may have had no clue about the miracles Jesus would perform. We don't even know if Simeon knew exactly how the Son of God would rescue the people. But here's what we knew for sure. God had promised a Savior and Simeon knew that Savior would rescue God's people some way, somehow, and he was holding that Savior in his arms. After about 400 years of things looking really bleak, God proved his faithfulness. He kept his promise. He sent his son, Jesus, to be born here on earth, and then Jesus rescued us all. He did what God said he was going to do. There were probably countless speculations about how God was going to make good on his promise. 400 years is a long time to come up with possible solutions. But the bottom line is that God came through, even though things looked bad, and he did it in a way that no one expected. After Mary and Joseph arrived at the temple, Simeon turned and thanked God for his faithfulness. The Bible tells us, He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. This may be a part of the Christmas story that you haven't heard much about, but it's very much a part of the story. The story of Simeon reminds us that even in difficulty, we can still trust. Unmet expectations in the present don't always mean unfulfilled promises in the future. Even though the story wasn't playing out the way God's people may have wanted, it didn't mean there wasn't a story playing out. Simeon held on to hope. He held on to who he knew God to be, a God who can be trusted to finish the story. Despite the people's current reality of unmet expectations, Simeon held on and he believed when nothing around him told him to because he knew God could be trusted. My guess is that for you, there's an area in your life where you're hoping for a different story than the one that's playing out in your life. You're hoping that God will come through, but it doesn't seem like he is. You may be wondering if God is working in your story at all. There may be several reasons why you doubt God's active work in your story. Maybe it's because when the job promotion that was promised to you came available, you were overlooked. Or maybe you had always imagined being a parent, but now you find yourself struggling with infertility. Or maybe it's because you parented your child as best you could, but they're still wayward and showing no signs of turning things around. Or maybe you had planned on a different story for your finances, and while you're working extra hours, you're somehow still barely making ends meet. In any of those situations, I can understand why it'd be hard to trust that God is still working in your story. But here are two things I want to encourage you with as we look at who God is in the Christmas story. When God shows up, it may not be what we expect, and it may not be when we expect, but He will show up. It's easy for us to imagine our stories playing out in some very specific ways, but just because they don't, it doesn't mean that God isn't working 
Oftentimes, it only means that God is working in our story differently in a way that we didn't expect under a timetable that is different than ours. What you can bank on is that God has not forgotten about you. And just because it seems like He isn't doing anything, you're not off His radar. The truth is that it's impossible for Him to forget about you. And when you trust Him, you can rely on the fact that He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And even though the story you imagine isn't matching up with the story you're currently living, it doesn't make God's love for you less true. God is always working in your story. I don't know what your situation looks like this Christmas. I don't know what you're hoping and praying for. The holidays may be a crazy, dysfunctional, lonely, difficult, boring, or unstable time in your life. And you may be wondering, where is God in all of this? Why isn't He doing something? The promise you can be sure of is that there is always a bigger story being written in your life, bigger than what you currently see, and it's being written by a God who can be trusted. As you go about this season, I hope the traditions of Christmas remind you of everything wonderful about God's Christmas story, even if your own history or present situation isn't. I pray they remind you that God is always writing a bigger story in your life. What if you started to believe that? What if you started to believe the truth that no matter what you see or what you're living through, God is writing a good story in your life? What would you do differently if you believed that? Maybe it would change the way you think. Maybe it would change the way you pray or what you pray for. Maybe it would change your relationships and how you treat your spouse, your kids, or your friends. How would that change your fears, worries, or anxieties? Imagine the differences you'd experience in your life if you lived in the light of the truth that God is working in your story, no matter what you can see. God has not forgotten you. He has not stopped writing your story. So if you do one thing this Christmas, do this. Be like Simeon. Don't give up on God because he's not done with you.